I would like to start this evening by thanking um, the uh, Coast Salish people for their gener uh, hospitality and generosity and for allowing us to be on uh, their traditional lands. Um, I would like to thank you for this. Equally, I would like to thank uh, CCPA for giving me this opportunity to be with you tonight so that we, I can share with you some of my thoughts about how the post 9-11 environment has affected our lives. The topics of civil liberties, human rights, accountability, injustice have been um, the subject of media headlines for the past few years. My main message today is that we are at a key point in our shared, shared history and the choices that we make as a nation going forward are important ones. Our task is to make the right choices both for security and for civil and human rights. The choices that we make, we must live with. And I want to be very clear with you that these choices will have profound and lasting impact on our lives. I personally believe that the security environment that has evolved in Canada since the events of 9-11 has damaged Canadian society by putting our national security needs and our desire to satisfy the security concerns of our neighbor in the South ahead of the liberties and rights that are guaranteed to us as Canadian citizens. We live in a society that has prized freedom and democracy and has held these principles up as specific characteristics that make us different from other societies. Like the United States, we had been willing to oppose or intervene in the affairs of countries who do not support these values on account of the fact that we would, we would hold them to be primary rights of human rights. Yet, since 9-11, we have willingly accepted heavy erosion of the very freedom and democracy we value in the name of protecting national security. Unfortunately, this damage to our freedoms and liberties occurred with the willing support of many of our politicians who believe that Canada needed draconian anti-terrorism legislation to fight the terrorist threat that was facing all of us. There is no doubt that Canadians need to be secure and feel secure. At the same time, however, without human and civil rights, we have no real security. We must We must ensure that the government does not end up facilitating acts of injustice against, against Canadians in the name of protecting its citizens. In my opinion, the best way to achieve both ends is to implant, impl implement all of Justice O'Connor's recommendations, especially when it comes to the establishment of a single oversight agency for the RCMP and other government departments that collect, disseminate, and share national security information. Until our government, until the Harper government, implement these recommendations, we Canadians are running the risk of having another repeat of the RR scenario. I'm sure you've heard about other Canadians. In fact, there was another uh, follow-up inquiry called the Kubuchi Inquiry. So my case cannot be portrayed anymore as, as a unique case. It has happened to many other Canadians, and what we don't know, where are the similar things happened to uh, other Canadians who sometimes prefer, for many reasons, to keep things, uh, to, to not go public about it. And that's why the need for, for this kind of oversight agency is, is extremely uh, important. 
When the, charters, when the Charter of Rights and Freedoms was entrenched in our Constitution in 1982, there was much hope that the rights of individual Canadians or groups of Canadians would no longer be subject to the political whims or unilateral actions by the government. There was hope that this document would ensure that Canadians, regardless of their race, religion, or ethnicity, would not be subjected to the kind of injustice that takes place in many other foreign countries, where mere suspicion condemns an individual to being arrested and held without charge or torture, in some, in some cases, summarily executed. The worst thing that has happened after 9-11 is that the US government has exercised direct or indirect pressure, pressure on other governments, both Western and, non -Western and, and Eastern governments, to uh, rapidly modify their laws in order to accommodate this new, called, this new war, which, is, which was called the War on Terror by the Bush administration. Under the banner of this war, Mere suspicion is enough to brand others as terrorists. Hearsay evidence becomes accepted and due process completely vanishes. Under the name, name of this war, suspected terrorists are rendered to other countries to be interrogated by torture, hence bypassing international obligations and treaties such as the Geneva Convention that clearly prohibits torture or even sending people to countries where torture is practiced. Here at home, it took our parliament less than three months to adopt C-36, which is our version of the uh, Patriot Act. And this unfortunately happened despite the clear warnings from human rights and civil liberties organizations. In my opinion, even if the expanded police powers in this law were rarely used, as uh, often argued by the government, it gave the police, the RCMP, a carte blanche when investigating national security-related uh, offenses.